2016. Of 2016. Let me go back, if I can, very briefly to the decision to publicly go out with your results on the email. Was your decision influenced by the Attorney General's tarmac meeting with the former President Bill Clinton? Yes, in, in a ultimately uh, conclusive way. That was the thing that kept it for me, that I had to do something separately to protect the credibility of the investigation, which meant both the FBI and the Justice Department. Were there other things that contributed to that that you can describe in an open session? There were other things that contributed to that. Uh, one significant item I can't, I know the committee's been briefed on. There's been some public accounts of it which are nonsense, but I understand the committee's been briefed on the classified facts. And probably the only other consideration but I guess I can talk about an open setting is that at one point the Attorney General had directed me not to call it an investigation, but instead to call it a matter, which confused me and concerned me. But that was one of the bricks in the load that led me to conclude I have to step away from the Department if we're to close this case credibly. Director, my last question. Uh, you're not only a seasoned prosecutor. Um, you've led the FBI for years. You understand the investigative uh, process. You've worked with this committee closely, and we're grateful to you because I think we've, we've mutually built trust in what your organization does and, and what we do. Is there any doubt in your mind that this committee can carry out its oversight role in the 2016 Russian involvement in the elections in parallel with the now special counsel that's been set up? No, no doubt. It can be done. It requires lots of conversations. But Bob Mueller is one of this country's great, great pros, and I'm sure you all will be able to work it out with him to Senator run it in parallel. Thank you very much. I want to thank uh, you. Mr. Comey, thank you for your service. Uh, America needs more like you, and we really appreciate it. Yesterday, uh, I got and everybody got the seven pages of your direct testimony that's now a part of the record here. And the first, I read it, then I read it again. And all I could think was, number one, how much I hated the class of legal writing when I was in law school. And you were the guy that probably got the A after, uh, after reading this. So uh, I, I find it clear. I find it concise. Uh, and uh, having been a prosecutor for a number of years and handling hundreds, maybe thousands of cases and read police reports, investigative reports, uh, this is as good as it gets. And, uh, and I really appreciate that. Not only, not only the conciseness and the clearness of it, but also the fact that you have uh, things that were written down contemporaneously when they happened and you actually put them in quotes so we know exactly what happened and we're, and we're not getting some uh, uh, rendition of it that, uh, that's in your mind. So, Thank you, so you're, you're to be complimented. For I had that. great uh, parents and great teachers who beat that into me. That, that's right. obvious. Sir. Um, the, the chairman walked you through a number of things that the, the American people need to know and want to know. Number one, obviously we all know about the active measures that the Russians have taken. Uh, I think a lot of people were surprised at this. Those of us that work in the intelligence community, didn't, it didn't come as a surprise. But now the American people know this, and it's good they know this, because this is serious and it's a problem. I, I think secondly, um, I gather from all this that you're willing to say now that while you were director, the President of the United States was not under investigation. Is that a fair statement? That's correct. All right. So that's a fact that we can rely on at this Yes, sir. Time. Okay. On, uh, I remember uh, you, you talked with us shortly after February 14th when the New York Times wrote an article that suggested that the uh, Trump campaign was colluding with the Russians. You remember reading that article when it first came out? I do. It was about... Uh Allegedly extensive electronic surveillance. Correct. Communications. Yes, and sir. and uh, that upset you to the point where you actually went out and surveyed the intelligence community to see whether whether you were missing something in that. Is that correct? That's correct. I want to be careful in open setting. I, I'm, but I, I'm not going to go any further than that. Okay. So thank you. Um, in addition to that, after that, you sought out both Republican and Democrat senators uh, to tell them that, hey, I don't know where this is coming from. But this is not the case. The, the, this is not factual. Do you recall that? Yes. Okay. So, so again, so the American people can understand this, that report by the New York Times was not true. Is that a fair statement? Yeah, in the main, it was not true. And again, all of you know this, the American people don't. 
the challenge, and I'm not picking on reporters, about writing stories about classified information is the people talking about it often don't really know what's going on, and those of us who actually know what's going on are not talking about it. And we don't call the press to say, hey, you got that thing wrong about this sensitive topic. We just have to leave it there. I mentioned to the chairman the nonsense around what influenced me to make the July 5th statement. Nonsense, but I can't go explaining how it's nonsense. Thank you. Uh, all right, so, so those three things we now know uh, regarding the active measures with the presence under investigation and the collusion between the, uh, the Russian, uh, the Trump campaign and the Russians. I, I want to uh, drill right down as my time is limited uh, to the most recent dust up uh, regarding uh, allegations that the President of the United States uh, uh, obstructed justice. And boy, you nailed this down on page five, paragraph three. You put this in quotes. Words matter. You wrote down the words so we can all have the words in front of us now. There's 28 words there that are in quotes, and it says, quote, I hope, this is the president speaking, I hope you can see your way clear to letting this go, to letting Flynn go. He is a good guy. I hope you can let this go. Now, those are his exact words. Is that correct? Correct. And you wrote them here, and you put them in quotes? Correct. Okay. Um, thank you for that. He did not direct you to let it go. Not in his words, no. He did not order you to let it go. Again, those words are not an order. No. He said, I hope. Now, like me, you probably did hundreds of cases, maybe thousands of cases, charging people with criminal offenses. And, of course, you have knowledge of the thousands of cases out there that, uh, where people have been charged. Do you know of any case where a person has been charged for obstruction of justice, or for that matter, any other criminal offense where this, they said or thought they hoped for an outcome? I don't know well enough to answer. And the reason I keep saying his words is I took it as a direction. Right. But, I mean, this is the President of the United States with me alone saying I hope this. I took it as this is what he wants he, me to do. Now, you, I, didn't, I didn't obey that, but that's the way I took it. You may have taken it as a direction, but that's not what he said. Correct. I, that's what he I said. He said, I hope. Those are exact words. Okay. Correct. You, you don't know of anyone that's ever been charged for hoping something. Is that a fair statement? I don't as I sit here. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator Feinstein. Thanks very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Comey, I just want you to know that I have great respect for you. Um, Senator Cornyn and I sit on the Judiciary Committee, so we have occasion uh, to have you before us. copies of your memos to anyone outside of the Department of Justice? Yes. And to whom did you show copies? I asked, the um, President tweeted on Friday after I got fired that I better hope there's not tapes. I woke up in the middle of the night on Monday night, because it didn't dawn on me originally, that there might be corroboration for our conversation. There might be a tape. And my judgment was I needed to get that out into the public square. And so I asked a friend of mine to share the content of the memo with a reporter. Didn't do it myself for a variety of reasons, but I asked him to because I thought that might prompt the appointment of a special counsel. And so I asked a close friend of mine to do it. And was that Mr. Wittes? No. Uh, no. Who was that? A good friend of mine who's a professor at Columbia Law School. Thank you. Now, here's Senator the Hunt. question. You're big, you're strong. I know the Oval Office, and I know uh, what happens to people when they walk in. There is a certain amount of intimidation. But why didn't you stop and say, Mr. President, this is wrong. I cannot discuss this with you. It's a great question. Maybe if I were stronger, I would have. I was so stunned by the conversation that I just I took it in. And the only thing I could think to say, because I was playing in my mind, because I was going to remember every word he said, I was playing in my mind, what should my response be? And that's why I very carefully chose the words. And look, I, I've seen the tweet about tapes. Lordy, I hope there are tapes. I, I remember saying, I agree he's a good guy, as a way of saying I'm not agreeing with what you just asked me to do. Again, maybe other people would be stronger in that circumstance, but that, that was, uh, that's how I conducted myself. I, I hope I'll never have another opportunity. Maybe if I did it again, I would do what it What was it about that meeting that led you to determine that you needed to start putting down a written record? A 
combination of things. I think the circumstances, the subject matter, and the person I was interacting with. Circumstances first, I was alone uh, with the President of the United States, or the President-elect, soon to be President. The subject matter, I was talking about matters that touch on the FBI's core responsibility and that relate to the President, President-elect personally. And then the nature of the person. I was honestly concerned that he might lie about the nature of our meeting, and so I thought it really important to document. That combination of things I'd never experienced before, but it led me to believe I got to write it down, and I got to write it down in a very detailed way. I think that's a very important statement you just made. And my understanding is that then, again, unlike your dealings with presidents of either parties in your past experience, in every subsequent meeting or conversation with this president, you created a written record. Did you feel that you needed to create this written record of these memos because they might need to be relied on at some future date? Sure. I created records after conversations, and I think I did it after each of our nine conversations. If I didn't, I did it for nearly all of them, especially the ones that were substantive. I knew that there might come a day when I would need a record of what had happened, not just to defend myself, but to defend the FBI and, and our integrity as an institution and the independence of our investigative function. That's what made this so, so difficult, is it was a combination of circumstances, subject matter, and the particular person. And so in all your experience, this was the only president that you felt like in every meeting you needed to document because at some point, using your words, he might put out a non-truthful representation of that meeting. Now, that's that's our, right, Senator. And I, I, as I said in my written testimony, as FBI director, I interacted with President Obama, and I spoke only twice in three years uh, and didn't document it. When I was Deputy Attorney General, I had one one-on-one -on -one meeting with President Bush about a very important and difficult national security matter. I didn't write a memo documenting that conversation either. Sent a quick email to my staff to let them know there was something going on. But I didn't feel with President Bush the need to document it in that way. Be again, because of the combination of those factors just wasn't present with either President Bush or President Obama. Yeah, I, I think that is very significant. I think others will probably question that.